Okay, we've got the uh, panel up, ready to go, let's start wiring. a bit of a head start. Um, I've got at the moment I've mounted a couple of circuit breakers and just the uh, transformers there for both 24 volt <coughs> and 12. Up in the corner up here I've got to cut a hole here and a hole in the box and there's a fan there that's controlled by this little thermostat here, um, sitting right there where the uh, fan will be, uh, it'll be a solid state relay, we'll go there, so for airflow, um, this will be running the electric element in the uh, HLT for the mash recirculation, um, and then when that gets turned on, if it gets too hot, uh, the air comes in by the vent at the bottom. Now, I'll be doing little snippets of what I've done um, and explaining which one goes where. Now, with the cable, the wiring for all these uh, thermostats and switches and etc., I've had to use one colour because the wire for this is quite expensive. Now, it only comes in 100 metre rolls and I'm not going to use 100 metres. So, what I'm going to do, I'm going to put numbers on each of them. So, the ground wire will be looped not numbered, the active wire will be looped with an A on it and each wire will have a corresponding number at both ends so I know what's what. Okay, uh, this is what we've done so far. Um, as stated previously, um, I've got the ducting on the inside of the door. For all the cables to run through, when they get through, there's a little lid that goes on there. Make it nice and neat, and there'll just be a, a link here, like this blue cable here, through. I'm to the solid state relay. That goes to a outlet here with the that the um, electric element will come up and in, plug into there. I've got main active bus circuit one, main active bus neutral circuit two. Uh, these are the, the pump. Switches, uh, circuit breakers coming down, as saw before, the uh, transformers and a timer. We've got most of the switch stuff done, because um, I've only got the fan, all the pumps haven't arrived, but uh, everything else will go through here. So this is how it'll roll. Uh, up there is a little number, number one. In on a cable there, and each cable will correspond with a number because all, all the wires will be blue. So this wire here, coming out down here, which is going to plug into this switch here, will have number one on it, and that's how it'll all roll. So far now, I'm just running in the active loop to all the switches and the supply power for the PIDs. As you can see here, cable's numbered. So our ring supply, it's cable one. And anywhere we go to a switch, you can say down here, cable number one, which matches up to cable number one here. What I've done is these here are the will be the two pumps. This here will be a spare. This one here is the 6 amp control circuit circuit breaker. This one here is my 20 amp bus. I've got 20A written on it. This one here is my control 6 amp bus, which has got 6A on it. And here is the second 
20 amp bus here. On here are the relays. Everything will be switched via relays at the back. No, no load will be switched from the front. Getting through it a bit, I have done the active loop and the ground loop. As you can see here, all the LED lights obviously need a ground wire to them. Um, down here, always want to do the ground wire. So I've run the ground in loop uh, purple, and I haven't put a number on those because uh, it is just one single cable. Moving along with the brew panel, I've got the extraction and gas feed done um, and numbering the cables has proved to be very useful when tracing back or changing certain things I would have done a wiring diagram for this but just in doing these few switches on the top I've changed the way I've done it three or four times so which would negate any drawing so what I've got here I'll run through the test now this is the control circuit down there are the timers and, and relays for the fans so on the front panel here PODs are going uh, the top means there's no probes in there so we can have gas on nothing will happen fan on nothing will happen until our damper drive is on so the damper drive is on red light indicating there's power there but nothing will work yet so we can in a brew day we could probably come set our stuff up like this i can switch the gas on no gas, nothing. Up the top there, as you can slowly see the damper drive's opening, which will let the air in for the extraction unit. Opens and closes, when it's closed, we don't get the draft or loss of heat or cool. And when it fully opens, we have the extraction fan come on. And then the gas supply come on. Good airflow. Now what we can do if we're still brewing, we can and don't want the fan, we can turn the fan off, which also then turns the gas off. Still with the damper drive open, we don't have to have everything turned off, but then if I turn the fan back on, the fan will go on, but not the gas. Then the gas will come on. more wiring uh, this probably will take a little bit of time but anyway progress so far is that we have power on the front panel per D showing this little thing here which means the temp probes aren't done time is here on a on a factory default but you can that's what it'll be like and I'll sort of a countdown and every time hop additions due that will go on. We have our water meter up and going. Run stop. We have our initial switches ready to go. We have our chiller pumps going. That should be here in the background. O2. So we have also, the O2 just went off, we also have the few more wires in place and put the lids on because obviously I haven't finished yet. Um, on the front stays, behind there I showed you previously the thermostat to keep the cabinet cool. It's all working fine. Uh, 
I'll be wiring up the 12 volt solenoids next. Which are the two switches there and there. Okay, a bit more done. As you can see, I've got all the PIDs wired. Um, all the remaining lights are wired up. The E stop button is now wired up. I'll show you that in a minute. Uh, I just put a piece of, piece of lid on there. Uh, the wires are poking out. I just need to do the two water switches. Um, coming around here, I've changed it up a bit here. Um, as you can see, it's changed up here. This, which was in there, um, I've had for many, many years, and it's faulty. It's, it was playing up, so I went and got a, a new timer for the gas. What I've also incorporated is the um, relay and push button here for the gas sensors, the O2 and the LPG sensors. Uh, I'll demonstrate that. So up here, I have a carbon monoxide sensor mounted according to the instructions there, which runs off 240, um, over and then down here, about there, I will mount the LPG one. So LPG goes low, carbon monoxide is high. So when they go off, I'll trigger that relay there, which turns the gas timer off. And it'll be indicated via the flashing red light. Now, when the gas is dis dis um, is gone, um, the relay will open. However, you will actually have to physically open the door here to check to see if the light's on, and then you reset it via the button. Okay, here's the front of the panel again, all lit up. All the temp probes are in place. Uh, the water's on. So when you run your water up here. That will go on, turn the water on, turn the water off to your levels. And these are your switches here. So that will turn on, which will turn the HLT on, and when that's firing, the red light will go. I've also incorporated the E stop down here. So that, and then everything's off. Everything's off. Now, even if I disengage that, it's, everything's still off off off. That is because the main power to the to the control panel is controlled via the main switch here at the door. Okay, so there's another E stop in conjunction with that one. Now what I do is I press the start button which gives the power to the control panel. And if I press start here, nothing's happened. That's engaged, that's out. Why is it not happening? No power coming on. That's off. Oh, we've got a switch on. Every single switch on this panel has an interlock. So in order to put the power back on, we have to turn the light off, turn the switch off rather, come over to here, Press the green button, light goes on, panel's coming to life. Now, as stated before with the emergency circuit for the carbon monoxide, which is up high, there's a test switch on it, which I'll run through the test procedure. So if it detects any gas, You notice that the gas lights off, the buzzer has stopped which means that the vault's cleared, however we still have a red flashing light and no gas. So that's just a visual thing as well. So we go around to here and then our green light is on the gas emergency and then I can clear it by this. So we've got cleared there, that's not flashing, and then the gas has come back on. Okay, we're done. 
I've temporarily got the temp probes in a box until we get the gear. It all runs up. We'll go around here and the internals with all the duct lids are on. Like I said, all the cables are numbered for easy tracing. White cables are 12 and 24 volt. Up there is for the fermentation control yet to be installed. Circuit breakers for pumps and so forth. Relays, timers and transformers. With little baby in the bottom. So this is all ready to go. But the elephant in the room here, oh no brigade. So after we come out of this COVID rubbish, I should be on to that.